Get full access to over 20,000 episodes with your free trial. My Outdoor TV. Sign up today. The mountain range which divide France and Spain is called the Pyrenees. The mountains constitute an ideal habitat for the wildlife due to the mild climate found here. There are numerous game species here, including free-ranging mouflons, red stag, roe deer, wild boar, and chamois. There is even a small number of brown bears living in the Pyrenees. This is the first of two episodes where we are going to accompany German Jochen Maas and Danish Erik Peterson in their first hunt in this fascinating area. As always, hunting in the mountains is quite demanding. The hunter must be able to walk long distances in rugged terrain, instantly determine the gender, age and size of the animals and shoot at long ranges. Red deer are the largest game species found in the Pyrenees. Like all over France, the species is thriving and has multiplied several times during the last decades. In 1971, the total population was around 30,000 animals and is now approaching 200,000 red deer. Due to competition for available food, the red deer has expanded into the forested parts of the mountainous areas. This is also true for the Pyrenees, where the animals will spend their winters in lower terrain. The rest of the year is spent in the forested areas of the mountains, where food is more abundant. The red deer in the Pyrenees have probably had a great influx of animals from the Spanish side of the mountains, as the animals can migrate through several valleys to pass the range. Regardless of their origin, the red stags of the Pyrenees are very similar to the subspecies called Spanish red deer. These have less body weight and develop smaller antlers than the Central European red deer. This is primarily due to the harsher conditions of living offered in the mountains and the less nutritious and varied food found here. But for the avid hunter, trophy size is not always of paramount importance. And hunting the red stags in the Pyrenees is challenging, both physically and when it comes to the stalking and shooting. And it is these great challenges we are about to witness. On the first hunt, we accompany Jochen Mass and his French guide, Julien saint supéry who are looking for a mature stag in the rutting season. 
This time of year, the stags are mostly found in the foothills of the mountains, where the cover is quite dense. This makes hunting them an extra challenge, as the only option of finding one is by following the sound of its roaring. Yes, it's all one. If you want, we can stop. Yeah, okay. Two, two. The old stag is more than 500 meters away, but the hunters decide to give it a try anyway. To get up to the clearing where the stag is, it is necessary for Jochen and Julien to make a detour and this means that the hunters for quite some time will not be able to see the stag. Accordingly, there is a risk that the stag will leave without the hunters knowing it, and hereby the entire stork will be in vain. However, that is the name of the game, and when hunting in the Pyrenees, you must count on long marches in hilly terrain every day. Patience and good legs are mandatory here in the mountains. Finally, Jochen and Julien are approaching the thicket, which surrounds the clearing where the stag is. It is still roaring, so most likely it is still standing in the clearing, where, well in advance, it can see any rivals who wants to challenge him. Unfortunately for the hunters, the stag decides to leave the clearing and go into the thicket shortly before they are getting close enough. The hunters decide to wait a while and see if the stag returns. While the hunters are looking for stags, they can enjoy the sight of the magnificent scenery which surrounds them. The stag did not return, and the hunters decide to get up higher in the terrain to look and listen for any activity from other stags. The hunters have spotted a good, but not quite mature stag lying in the sun and chewing the cud. The stag is not ready to be harvested, but nevertheless, it is nice to watch the magnificent animal. Jochen decides to sneak up closer. He wants to take a closer look. However, as Jochen gets closer, the stag is quite obviously getting concerned. It won't be long before it gets up and disappears. What a pity. Monster's dog. <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> yes. Was very good stock. Very good story. But I think doesn't marry to to take it. Yes. I think it's five five years old stuck. Yeah. Yes. Not older. And, and the handlers 
not so big, not so high. I think we have we have just just time to to find another one older. But it was an excellent dog. Yeah, nice, very nice. Beautiful, morning, beautiful, beautiful dog. All beautiful, beautiful hunter, yeah. exceptional guide. As it is almost noon, the hunters expect little activity for some hours. As they were up before daybreak and have hiked a long way in the mountains, Jochen decides to take a nap in the beautiful scenery. And as we have all been told, he who sleeps does not sin. Compared to what you know from Germany, the stack here in the mountain, what will you say is the big difference to Balibu or other okay. districts in Germany? I think there are two big differences or two main differences, I would say. It's one, the trophy. Um, when you compare the trophy from the mountain stark with the Berleburg stark, uh, the Berleburg stark, of course, it's much better from the quality from the trophy. Yeah. You can expect, uh, if you hunt there, a very good trophy. Yeah. Um, because they have a very professional deer management system and uh, they take out the stags with uh, minimum 12 years. It's very important yeah. to let the stags get old and then you have a real good stag. Yeah. And uh, here the mountain stags, uh, they are much smaller from the trophy, yeah. but uh, the experience is good to hunt in the mountains. Uh, this is one uh, different. Um, another different is of course the hunt. Yeah. In Berleburg uh, you can have a very nice hunt as well, a very good stalking in the forest. Yeah. And you can go also to a high seat in the morning or in the evening. And um, this is different here. You go out here in the morning and stay the whole day in the hill. Yeah. Uh, or perhaps uh, more days. Yeah. You go to a little um, house here in the hills and yeah. stay there and have the night here in the hills. It's very nice as well. Yeah. And uh, I would say these are the main differences. Yeah. Of course, it's much more difficult to manage them out here in the, in the mountain. Yeah. Maybe here you can say you shoot more when you get the chance for a nice, nice mature animal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You are not going out and take choice of eight different or ten different. When you have the chance for an old mature animal, you have to take, have it, to yeah. take it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. In the afternoon, Julien and Jochen are heading for another spot where Julien knows that the stags like to wallow. After a while, they are approaching a clearing where they can see red deer. You see it? Yeah, I see it. It's a big one. The stag looks promising, but the hunters must move forward to get within range. Okay. As the hunters are getting closer, the risk of being spotted increases. They're now within range, but they must risk moving out in the open to get a free line of fire. There is no way Jochen can lie down to shoot, and the distance to the stag necessitates the use of shooting sticks. The question is whether the deer will spot them before Jochen can make a good shot. He's in the forest. Unfortunately, the deer moved off 
leaving only a domestic cow behind. So the hunters must try to move closer to get a better angle with the possibility of a shot. Stag suddenly reappeared, and Joachim must be Stop. ready in a hurry. Stop. Okay. Okay. The experienced Joachim dropped the stag on the spot with a well placed bullet high on the shoulder. Oh, yes. Yes. Come on, you think it's dead? Congratulations. Thank you very much. You, you, take, you take it. Wow, was very exciting. What emotion, yes. Good stock. A good stock, yes. Maybe and good stock, I think old stock. And we will see, we will see. Meters. I think uh, 190 meters over, yeah. yes. Okay. That's a good shot, that's a great shot. Wow. Oh. Not very so good. bad, not so bad. It's super. Very good stock. It's dead. Wait, I'll unload it better. Moment. Okay. Wow, Great. Look. What a stack. Fantastic. Yes, really fantastic for for this region. For a mountain it's stack, it's great. great yeah. 12, Twelve points. It is, it is also and thick. Very good. Yes. And look at the neck. Thanks a lot. Thanks to you. What and thanks for, for the stock and for the shot. Thank okay. you. I'm very happy. Ooh. I'm very happy. Me too. I think it's, it's a good, uh, good trophy because it's, it's not middle, it's up to me, middle class. And it's a typical trophy of of this region, okay. you know, very symmetric and not so long, but uh, very thick. It's a 12 and, pointer. And I think points are very good. Yeah. I think you, you can be happy of this, yeah. this trophy. And I mean, the action to the stock, we stock about over uh, 300 meters. Yeah. And it was very, very good. Very good. And the body too. Yeah. Seems, seems good. to be old. Yes, I think we will we will control by the tips, but I think I'm could be happy. eight yeah. eight nine years old. Eh? Okay. We have to put now in front. We have to put tax on the leg. Okay. You yes. know, For with uh, the day to make it legal and the months. To make the stack legal. Yes, to make the stack legal. Okay. okay. And we, if we don't do that, we can have problems. Okay. Any problems? We don't want any problems. <laughs> yes. You too. Okay. Now the first October. It's the first October today. Yes. I didn't know it because I was hunting the whole day, and so I'm completely out. <laughs> yes. Which is good. And take on the legs. And that's okay. Very good. No, it's a great, great trophy. Yeah. You nice. can be you can be happy. I'm really happy. Yes. Yeah. Nice animal. Yeah. Very good, yeah. So everything went very well and I'm happy to be here at the Stark. Very good. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Julia has called in the other hunters to assist in dragging the stag to the nearest road where it can be loaded into a car.
And now we move on to hunting the nimble chamois, which lives in the Pyrenees. The chamois belongs to a family of species which the scientists call goat antelopes. There are two species of chamois recognized by the scientists. The alpine chamois, along with several other subspecies, are found in the mountainous parts of Europe from the Caucasus in the east to the Alps in the west. The other species of chamois, or isa, as the French call it, lives in the Pyrenees. This species of chamois has no subspecies. Jürgen, you have been traveling also around in Europe and shoot chamois in the mountains. So yeah. what are your experiences and what can I expect when I come to the mountains, to the really mountain? Okay, I think you can expect a very good hunt yeah. because it's real hunt for me. Um, it's hard work yeah. and uh, it's very important that you are yourself in good condition, that you are fit because you have to walk up the hills and climb a little bit and stay out the whole day and uh, perhaps you are 10 hours in, a, in the mountains a day or even longer and this is quite hard but it's uh, very good and it's um, very nice hunting. Yeah. I think also important is that you have a very good equipment. Yeah. Uh, it starts with uh, shoes and good clothes and uh, I think very important is also to have a very accurate rifle. And in the mountains you have big distances, yeah. mostly you shot. Uh, sometimes you are lucky to shoot only 100 meter, but you have to prepare to shoot uh, 300 meter, up to 300 meter, or even a little bit more. And you can do it only if you have a very good rifle, yes. if you are used to the rifle, and uh, if you have a right caliber in it. And when you say right caliber, uh, is that, uh, of course, a flat shooting caliber? What, what are your rifle for the mountain? It depends uh, what you are hunting. Um, as you saw yesterday, we were hunting the Red Star here yeah. in the mountain, and I used a 300 Winchester Magnum for it, yeah. because the Stark is uh, heavy as well. Yeah. And so it's good to have a strong caliber. And the stack suddenly immediately goes down with a yeah. bullet and this is very good yeah. because you can have a real problem in the mountains when the run away. You yeah. won't find it and yeah. perhaps they go to places where you uh, cannot uh, walk or yeah. you don't bring it out again. Yeah. yeah. So, but when you go for chamois hunting, um, I, in the past, I did it in Switzerland, Austria, and Romania, in the Carpathian Mountains. I prefer my Kiplaufbüchse. Yeah. It's a single shot rifle. I prefer it because it's very light. Yeah. And uh, this is important in the hill. Yeah. You feel at the end of the day, you feel every gram you yeah. <laughs> take with you in the mountain. Yeah. And uh, so the single shot is very good and when you are used to, you can open it very quickly and reload if yeah. it is necessary. Yeah. But uh, very important is you have to concentrate on the first shot. Um, the caliber for Shamua you can use a little bit smaller than for a Stark. Um, I can recommend, for example, a 6.5. It's a perfect German caliber for yeah. Shamua, 6.557 or 65. Yeah or also 68, they are very good for chamois. Um, even the 7mm Remington Magnum is very good and um, the 243 is good for chamois as well. Yeah. It depends what kind of chamois you are shooting. Yeah. When you uh, go to Romania, the chamois are more heavier, you have body size up to 50 kilo or more. And then I prefer, yeah, the 6.5, so yeah. it's very good for this. If people really want a mountain hunt, uh, and, and um, I will recommend them chamois hunt. Absolutely, yeah. Because you, you really get something for not small money, but fair money. Yeah. And I think you can have uh, uh, at least uh, 10 different species around in Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. If you want, you can travel to Spain. Now we are in France, you can go to Carpathane go in the Alps. So there's many different places to go uh, for the chamois hunt. I look forward to try the Pioneer. Yeah. But uh, I must say, 
Weidmann Seil for a very, very good shot. Weidmann Stank, yeah. And, uh, and I will see you on a, another day. It was a great experience for me here to be here in the Pyrenees. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> I would be very good fun to come with you to the yeah. uh, Chamois area, but uh, I have to go home. My plane is tomorrow morning and I have to go to a hunt at home at Saturday. I have to be there, but it was very nice to be here with you. Thanks a lot. The same for me. It was a pleasure. It is early morning and Eric is on his first day of hunting. Eric has two guides, Thierry Borderol and Fabien Nabies, who know the area well and have scanned the slopes of the mountains surrounding the valley all morning. The hunters have already spotted chamois, but they are very far off and it is an open question if they can get to them due to the terrain. Soon the hunters spot some other chamois, and among them is a good male. The chamois are feeding towards the right, and the hunters must hurry to get within range while the animals are still in sight. Once you lose sight of the game, there is a grave risk that they will alter direction or lie down in a place where the animals will spot you before you see them. The hunters are heading up the hillside and soon the terrain gets quite rugged. It is advisable to carry a rifle in a sling or strapped to your backpack so both hands are free when it is necessary to climb over boulders. Your shooting sticks must also be sturdy so they can double as walking sticks. som voldsomt svært, men det er glat. Det der mus, gamle mus, der er på de klipper, det er forbandet glat. Men øh, vi kommer sådan 100 meter op nu, og jeg tror, vi har 100 meter mere. Jeg tror, at vi har rimelig tæt på, øh, på gemsen, og der er specielt en med en, et meget flot gammel hundhyr med en meget flot mor, som vi lige skal op og se lidt nærmere på. Og, øh, the terrain gets steeper and the hunters are really working for their keep now.
As they climb, the hunters can enjoy the sight of the beautiful valley below them, but mostly when they have a break to catch their breath. Unfortunately, the chamois are climbing too, so the hunters realize that it will take quite a while and quite some climbing to get within range. The higher up you get, the more rugged the terrain. Eric is having difficulties with the loose rocks on this slide. Here, the shooting sticks are a great help for keeping your balance. The weather can change very suddenly in the mountains. Here, the sun disappears very fast as the clouds come rolling in. Eric is not the only hunter out here today. This golden eagle is also looking for prey. Unlike the eagle, however, the hunters have spotted theirs. The chamois has nice horns, and the hunters decide to try and get it. But it is no easy task for a lowlander to climb these hills and make good shooting. Will Eric catch his breath in time? Thank you. Yes, yes, okay. 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 Good. It's just. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. We're going to put it in. Oh. Oh. Ah, yes. So shoot. Okay. See? Okay. Give it in. Thank you. Mmm. <laughs> yes. Good, good. Eh? Thank you. Jamen så er det så lykkedes mig at, at finde Gims op på, langt op på bjerget her for et øjeblik siden. Øhm, det var faktisk ejlerne, der opdagede den, fordi jeg havde rigeligt med at gå og holde øje med, hvor jeg satte mine ben. Men faktum er, at øh, jeg fik lagt mig i en god øh, skudposition her og, og fik øh, forklaret, at jeg skulle skyde til den her stå nederst til venstre. Der var to deroppe. Og det gjorde jeg så med at fik stavlet en rygsæk op og stod lidt hernede på sten og, og fik skudt Gimsen som jeg tror fik en lille smule et bagligt skud, men det, den røg i hvert fald ned og blev op, og det er jo det. Og øhm, nu så skal jeg så lige øh, sunde mig lidt, og så skal jeg kravle med op og hente Kalorius, se hvad det egentlig er. For en, jeg ved, at jeg har skudt en, en, en flot gemse her i Pyrenæerne i Frankrig, men hvor stor den er, jamen det gik lidt stærkt for mig og i min håndkikkert, men øh, de påstår hårdnak, at det er en god gemse, jeg har skudt, så det tror jeg på. Jeg vil sige, at jagten heroppe, der har været masser af dyr, men de er, man skal altså være nogenlunde frisk gående, øh, hvis man skal gøre sig håb om at både følge med guiderne, selvom de er nogle rigtig øh, søde og fornuftige mennesker, så skal man, altså, man skal kunne kravle lidt i de klipper og gå på de skråninger og have lyst til det her, så er det en flot jagt. Det kan jeg anbefale. This big, big old female, which are 12 year old, a very, very nice trophy for me. And I was together here with two very clever and, and nice people to hunt with. This is a very, very nice way to to have a mountain hunt because it's it's a really, really free range animal and and rather tough hunting. So I, I like it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
With a good chamois in the backpack, Eric and his guides can happily start on their way back to the road down in the valley, and even watch numerous chamois on their way. It has been some wonderful days here in the spectacular and beautiful mountains, with lots of physical challenges and good hunting. The hunters made good shots, putting down the animals on the spot, and this is an added bonus to the entire experience. It is a small wonder that the hunters are now walking home to their quarters, tired but full of happy memories of a great hunt and a great experience.